Hey man, it's the Hellion from the Hellion Rocks. Today we're going to talk about the brand new Warrant record, Louder, Harder, Faster. Who's talking to me today, man? Uh, my name is Robert Mason. Robert Mason, man. So you've been with Warrant uh, for since 2008 now. A couple albums right. out, Rockaholic, and then now Louder, Harder, Faster. This is a kick-ass rock and roll record, bro. Oh, well, thank you. So uh, let's talk about how you got there. This uh, this record, to me, when I was listening to it, I had to stop and check myself. See, is it really 2017? Because, to me, this record brought everything about old rock and roll that I really love. Well, you're our target demographic, then. I appreciate it. Well, see, Robert, that, you know, that, what's, what's cool is... Man. Yeah, you're just, I know this for for a fact, you're just a month older than I am. So wow. we probably grew up with the same influences and listening to the same music. Me and, and I think that you, right, I think you brought that out from your heart and soul and put that into this new record. Uh, Honestly, James, you can't help, I can't help but wear my influences on my sleeve. I didn't want it to be too contrived, but I did have a feel. I, I kind of feel I got what I wanted. Uh, true to you know, true to the warrant records like Cherry Pie and Doggy Dog that I loved certain elements of each. I wanted to pull from both of those, but obviously not be derivative. And then I think when we just got around all those vintage instruments and everybody put their two cents in, and what do you love? What do you really love? What do you want to hear? What do you not so much want to hear? It just came out that way. To me, it sounds like seventy eight, seventy nine not 80s or 90s or beyond. Uh, but there are elements of new stuff in there. But yeah, you know, we made the record we wanted to make. We we weren't afraid of having a little diversity and throwing a curveball at the uh, at the playlist, you know? Exactly. You know, it it uh it does have that vintage feel and vibe about it, but it still has a, a pertinent feel to it too with with modern rock and roll. So you know, good job, mission accomplished. <laughs> well, the songs are new, you know, but our souls are old, you know, so in, in a lot of ways. And uh, I stand on the shoulders of giants, you know. I only do what I'm capable of, but I, like I said earlier, I, I our influences kind of show, and I wasn't afraid to let that happen. Yeah, that's that's kind of obvious. You know, one track in particular, just... I man, I keep finding myself repeat, 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 and that's only broken heart. And you, uh, okay, tell me it, why you got, think so. Or think about it. Well, so when the, when the track came, I've had the record for for a minute now. I've been listening to it for for a bit, and in the first go through, you know, I'm. I, First off, the album there's no skipping. It's, you don't skip a song on this record. That's the that's that's the quality of it. Anyway, wow, I mean, track that's, four. That's, honestly, that that's a lot of praise because I think people's attention spans are so short now that maybe that would happen. Right. But yeah, opinions vary. But that's that's well, high praise for me. You couldn't have paid me a bigger compliment. Well, thanks. That's cool. Well, anyway, track four came on, and I'm thinking, wait a minute. I'm a big Thin Lizzy fan, and obviously, you know, people are going to make that they're going to make that comparison to that track. And Everybody does, it's, right? I, exactly, and you know, and, and it's got that vibe there, but yet not. And that song well, is just so infectious for me. The story that's behind, it, you know, that, it's, that it tells is that's rock and roll right there. And that one, if you have one song to listen to off of an album that just came out recently and said, "What's rock and roll?" That song right there is it. Well, you know what? That's okay. If if I can interject, go ahead. That song that song started off completely different from where it ended up. Uh, it was an idea that I, that uh, Jerry and Eric, uh, Eric Turner and Jerry Dixon had, and Jerry sent me the demo, and it was headed in a direction. I just you know we I I threw some vocals on it. I went up to Jerry's house, and we kind of worked on it, and got it to where it was going to be. And I thought, okay. Maybe I'm being really too critical, but I I don't I'm not feeling this particular song as much as I think I could. But I didn't have a good answer. 
And, you know, we talked about it as a band. We talked about it. And then very late in the songwriting and pre-production stage, I'm sitting in my house in, in Arizona, half a bottle of wine in me. I mean, God's honest truth. And I'm going like, fuck, what do I do? I know there's something to this, and it's got, like, the intro riff is really cool, but it didn't lift to other parts of the song. And it's not like I listen to a lot of Thin Lizzy, but I'm a fan. Like, I'm not, you know, I wasn't listening to other people's records writing this record, but I'm a, I'm a song fan. And there's no denying I am a Thin Lizzy fan, and that's huge songwriting for me. And I loved the way those stories are told. And I guess without having a direct trying to do that, I just sat down with an acoustic, plugged in an electric, plugged my piano in, and tried my best to go someplace with what I thought was an amazing spark of an idea. You know, the, the, the parts of the song I really loved that existed, and had a, all of a sudden had a pre-course. I was like, oh. And then the the ascending chordal thing, which I'm not going to tell you where that's – I didn't realize it, but later on somebody, some, some woman I know said, hey, that's just like – and I'm like, oh, shit, maybe it is. You know, I didn't rip that off from anywhere either. But then when the chorus came in, I had it – it just fell out of me one night, and I called Dixon, or he called me. And I think, you know, he had been at home. We're both, like, relaxing on a night off in our houses. And I go, you know, that song, I, I got. I, I think I have a really cool idea for it. Let me finish it. And we had a short conversation. I hung up. I come into pre-production. I said, hey, you know that song that we demoed that has went this way? Well, you know, and I, it was – I was, quite frankly, a little nervous because I know everybody, you know, some of the other guys in the band really loved the way the song was in the beginning. I said, well, I kind of wrote a bridge, and then I kind of wrote a chorus that it didn't have, and I kind of rewrote the whole lyrics, and the title's different. Oh, and here you go. It's called Only Broken Heart. I'm like, the band looked at me like, are you serious? Because, you know, we want to give it a chance, but, uh, you know, and they were really married to the other version, certain members of the band. I played the uh, the chords for Turner, and he loved the way the, the changes happened. So musically, everybody was on board, and then I'm like, dude, it needs to tell this story, and this, you know, let's just do this. You know, it's there's, there's a long history of bands like this that do this sort of thing. This just fell out of me one night with a wine buzz on, give it a shot, and I sang it acoustically. You know, not plugged in. One of my guitars not plugged in. And then Jeff Dolson's like, well, what if you did the chorus this way with a little tweak? We were playing the song within an hour in pre-production, and it turned out to be the way you hear it. So yeah, that particular one, I, I get the influences, but, you know, to me it's fun. I, I really appreciate that, the, that you think so. Yeah, I, I dig it. You know, there's a couple of good tracks in there. You know, you, you're pulling off other 70s influences. Like, you know, I feel a little Aerosmith. I feel a little... A little uh, cheap trick and whatnot, but you know what? It's still it still sounds like Warren, you know, and and everybody. Right, you get these top, you, know, you get those you get those you get those four guys and me in a room, and no matter what you write, it's gonna sound like that band. And thankfully, you know, we work well together. Yeah, it's it's, it's obvious. So louder, harder, faster actually drops tomorrow, Friday the twelfth. You know, um, I've got a review that's going to be coming up tomorrow, too. And, you know, it's it gives faith and it gives hope that, you know, rockers are out there having fun with it again, which is how Rock and Roll started in the first place. You know, the vibe is fun and fresh, and, you know, they're just going out there and pouring out their hearts and souls, and that's what I take from this. Well, I you know, that's high praise. Uh, that is the goal when you – come out with a bunch of batch of songs and you think they work well together and you want to put a record out, you know, that the end user, the guy that downloads it or buys it or whatever, connects with it in some way. So, man, that's, you know, like I said, that's high praise. Cool. Um, So you and the Warren boys, are you guys going to be hitting the road and, and backing this record up with a tour or what's the plan? Uh, We're constantly doing – a couple of three, four flight dates in a row and then come home for a couple of days. We do that year round. We never really stop. Uh, we'll do a few more shows this year because of this record. Uh, spring and summer usually ramp up a little heavier than the, than the, you know, winter does. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're going. I'm flying to Vegas at the end of the day on the last flight from Phoenix to Vegas tonight and, uh, doing TV in the morning, doing the national anthem at a, at a 
PBR event and then doing our record release party in Vegas, and then we're going to Salt Lake, and then I come home. A couple of days later, I'm on a plane again. So, yeah, uh, so everything you're, can you're be found. Point, yeah, you guys are at a point now where, you're, where you can go out and have fun, you know, kick it in the ass, and then get some downtime at home, that, and that makes it a lot uh, easier on you guys, right? Uh, yeah, the touring model has changed. Obviously, you're not out for X amount of months in a bus anymore, you know. In a bus, I mean, eventually you have to spend a Tuesday night in a small city somewhere. You know, this way we can we can hit the popular nights of the week, play, like I said, a few shows, and come home and sleep in your own bed for a couple of days. Yeah, that's cool. So, you know, this record, Louder, Harder, Faster, the whole thing as a whole, did, did you guys bring your ideas together like we were just talking about uh, Only Broken Heart? Did it did it piecemeal together? Or did you guys get in a room and jam, or what? How did the other songs come about? Uh, a little of both. Yeah, both. Uh, okay. A lot. A lot of this record was Jerry Dixon and I batting ideas back and forth, and then playing them for the band, and everybody throws their you know two cents in, and they kind of mold that way. Uh, I have to sing them, so a lot of the lyrical content comes from me. Uh, but you know, Jerry and Eric, and actually everybody in the band, Joey, you know, Joey and Steven as well. Everybody does their thing. So it, it, even if one guy comes with a what he thinks is a completed song, it's not like we're looking to, you know, shred those ideas to bits. But opinions and thoughts and, you know, the creative vibe, if it sparks something in somebody, you know, Turner can have a couple of chords or a riff. And I'll go, oh, dude, 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 I, I totally know what to sing over that. And I could sing it and send it back to him. He's like, nah, eh, I'm not really feeling it. <laughs> you know? And then I go, uh, okay, all right, all right, whatever. You know, we'll get him on the next one. And we both, we all do that with each other. And it ends up being, you know, the best ideas win when we have a batch of songs we're happy with, like we do on this one. We we tell you know somebody, okay, we're ready. Let's look for a producer. You know, and that's how it happens. Uh, Certain songs, like I sit down with a cup of coffee and an acoustic guitar, electric guitar, or my piano every morning when I'm home, and that's my ritual. I try to make something cool come out. And if nothing comes out, I'm like, nice. okay, I set it down for a while. And if not, you know, if something strikes me, uh, you know, I put it on my home studio, works pretty well for that, for demos, uh, or for doing single tracks, you know, or even an iPhone. I mean, I sent the ballad idea, I sent you in my life as chords and me just singing empty melodies with no words to um, a songwriting buddy of mine, Joe, in Nashville. And he said, this is awesome. When can you fly out here? You know, a couple of weeks later, we went to his studio in, in his barn in, in Franklin, outside Nashville, and finished it in an hour. That's so, cool. you know, then I bring it to the band, and they go, okay, cool. It's one voice and one instrument. And I threw a little guitar solo on there, like, you know, just placeholder for the original demo. Then we got the idea to build it up into what it is on the record with the full band coming in only towards the end and, you know, kind of gradually the major Tom-ish kind of acoustic strummy guitar part, the solo in the middle, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it worked, you know. And you, you mentioned producer a little bit. Didn't uh, Jeff Pilsen do this, didn't he? Yes. Jeff and I knew each other uh, since the Lynch Mob days, uh, but we never really worked together, you know kind of mutual fans, you know, and I, I recognize a very musical guy, great singer, you know, good songwriter in his own right, and he's got a killer studio in uh, in Southern California, and we had heard some things he did, uh, I think Jerry turned me on to a couple of uh, records he had produced and engineered and or engineered for our label, Frontiers, and once we heard those, we're like, yeah, let's go meet with this guy, this could be cool. Yeah, it so. worked. Definitely good, good combination, good chemistry. You know, um, I've read some of the agree. reviews of the record. It's it's getting really good, good praise. You know, not and people are digging it. And I've been looking online at some of the songs that have been released that people have heard and very good feedback. You know, I when I told some close friends of mine that I was going to be talking to you, they were like, "Yeah, you know, great guy." You know, uh, James Wood, a friend of mine, does sound for Alice Cooper. Said to say hi to you. Oh yeah, I love him. James is a good dude. Yes, he worked for us a little yeah, bit too. So. Yeah, you did. Okay, cool. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, you just got a a good vibe about you in in, in this day, and that's really really cool that, to find. And it's really refreshing because you know a lot of people get 
in, in the industry, you get to a point where, you know, they just kind of blow people off. But the feedback I got about you and the guys was, you know, warm down to earth. And, and that's really cool. That's kind of kind of neat to hear. Uh, once again, high praise. You know, honestly, I treat people the way I want to be treated. Uh, isn't that the rule you were taught when you were a kid? I mean, I'm the first person that's to. That's what I was taught. You know, I'm, I might have a small problem with authority <laughs> that comes out every once in a while. <laughs> I'm but I'm you. also the guy who's I'm like, you. you know, I'll, I'll, I'm the guy who's like, I'll live and let live. You're like, hey, I, you know, I make a joke. It's like, I'm the kind of guy who's like, if uh, if you don't like me, you know, don't talk shit on the internet. Come and tell me at a show or come find me at the bank. You know, we'll talk about it. You know, it, it right. doesn't matter <laughs> one way or the other. I, I try to make as many, you know, you try to not burn bridges and leave as, as clean a path as you can, you know, professionally and otherwise. But, uh you know, I think I said as a joke one time, it's like, yeah, dude, I'm totally live and let live. If you can keep your dog from pissing on my lawn, I won't burn down your house. <laughs> there you go. You know, Word like, wisdom. That's, you know, that's obviously a joke, but just funny. No, um, I'm right there with you. So I know you, we got to cut this short because I know you got another interview after me, then you got to get out. So talking to Robert Mason, vocals for Warrant, brand new record. Louder, harder, faster. Coming out tomorrow, Frontier Records. Check that out online. You can find it anywhere. What I like to do before I sign off, Robert, is this goes out. I have listeners and viewers in 150 countries around the world. What I like oh, to damn. do out with is for you. the world is yours. This Right now, this, this is yours to talk. Anybody say anything about anything you want to do, this is yours. Go ahead. Uh, look, I have, honestly, I want to stay on the subject. Uh, we're proud of this record. I have the greatest job in the world for me. I get to stand on my side of a microphone and do the thing I've wanted to do as far back as I can remember, like two, three years old, is just sing and have people appreciate it. So when they do, it's the greatest thing in the world for me. I, and I'm hugely thankful for that. Uh, you know, no false modesty. I like what I do and I've, I try to be as good as I can, but I hope Warrant fans will give uh, a new record a chance. Perfect. Robert, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to maybe you, you coming near New Mexico so we can go check out the, the live show. Um, the record's great. Keep doing what you're doing, and I appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Thank you much, James. I really do. All right. We'll talk to you later. Stay healthy and we're All right. Out.